What's up you guys and welcome back to another reddit reading video. Before this video starts I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support since I've been back these past well two videos now I just posted that last one right now as I'm reading this. Let's just go ahead and jump into this r slash entitled parents you guys know the drill. Entitled aunt wants to shut a supermarket down because it doesn't serve her kind of meat and a good man comes to the rescue. I asked my cousin for stories about his mom aka EA and he told me a bunch of them and he asked me to post them. Again, sorry for the translations. I had to translate from Lebanese Arabic because that's how my cousins told the story. I'll be sure to ask him for more stories. Introducing the cast. EA, entitled aunt. CC, cool cousin. PE, poor employee. DM, good man. Background info. EA was a really devout Muslim who would try to shove her beliefs down other people's throats and that got her into fights in the supermarket in Australia one day. EA brought some beef from the supermarket and when she paid for them, she realized that they weren't halal. Like kosher, but for Muslims. EA, excuse me, PE, what can I help you with, madam? EA, why is this meat not halal? PE, excuse me? EA, I said, why is the meat not halal? CC, mom, please. EA, isn't this a country which respects people of all religions? Why doesn't your product have halal label on it? PE, I sincerely apologize for your product being the way it is, but this is just how we buy our products. EA, well then your product isn't halal. That means you guys are breaking the laws. Does that make sense? PE, ma'am, please, I'm only a cashier. I'm not involved in buying products. EA, that's too bad because someone has to take the blame for your supermarket since it breaks the laws. At this point, GM, who was a Muslim, interferes on the behalf of the employee. GM, ma'am, I'm a Muslim and I really dislike the fact that you guys are mistreating this poor cashier. EA, excuse me? GM, you heard me, ma'am. I have been buying items from the supermarket for 10 years and I never complained about their product's quality. EA, well then, aren't you a real Muslim because you are buying from a supermarket which doesn't sell halal products? GM, that isn't my problem. There's a butcher down the streets which sells halal products. There is no need to ruin a business because it simply doesn't sell the items you seek. EA, how dare you support these infidels for not selling halal food? How dare you call yourself a Muslim? GM, if you don't like the quality of products here, just leave. EA, you are going to HE double hockey sticks. After EA said that, she stormed out of the supermarket, and which left the CC apologizing sincerely to the cashier and the man. So all was good in the end. TLDR, entitled aunt tries to shut down a supermarket because of her religious beliefs, but gets shut down by a good man. What is halal? Halal is Arabic for permissible food defined by slaughtering the animal by slitting its throat. What? They, so they can only eat the animal if you slit their throat? That is just the weirdest. I have no clue what that's about. All I know is that is definitely an entitled parent or entitled aunt, I guess, in this case. <laughs> Let's move on to the next story. Hopefully it's not about slitting throats. <laughs> no, Karen, your daughter can't have my laptop. So I'm a Malaysian kid living in Hong Kong. Both parents are from Malaysia. My mom's dad, granddad, was sort of rich back in the 1980s and had a lot of money for my mom and her other two brothers and sisters. My mother's older brother is EF, his wife is EM, and four daughters are ED1, ED2, ED3, and ED4. The family are jerks and always play the suffering family with too many kids card to get the inheritance from my grandma, left to her by my granddad who died in 2011, all just to satisfy their needs. So last year, when I went back for New Year's to celebrate with fam, I brought my MacBook to do my schoolwork with. But in one of our family dinners, ED2 sees me working with it and says, wow, you have a MacBook? Even I don't have one, it's so cool. And all that sappy junk, I only half heartedly and say, yeah, I guess. So can I have it to work on stuff for my uni? I have homework to hand and I forgot my laptop. I was still focusing on my work and didn't reply. So she took it as, guess that's a yes then. I said, what the freak and snatched it back and told her to screw off and stop being such a dumb jerk. She then proceeds to run out for her mother. Oh, by the way, ED1 was 19 when this happened, four years older than I am. Ian walks in not long after immediately shout, give my daughter her MacBook or else. What do you mean her MacBook? It's mine and I'm working on it. I don't care. She needs it more than you do. She actually has work to do, not stupid work like yours. Not my problem. It's your own fault that your daughter didn't bring her laptop home. I don't care. Give it now. Ian tries to reach for it, but I move my laptop away and go find my mom to help. Luckily, she goes freaking mental on the EM and she stops bothering me. This wasn't the only time something like this happened and everyone in the family is so fed up with it. Jeez Louise, could you imagine having a family member like that? That sucks to- 
I feel really bad for the people who are like, family is thicker than blood, whatever that freaking saying is, we're family over friends or whatever. But if your family is toxic, get rid of them like a freaking old crusty band-aid. Throw them to the side. They're not worth that. Mental health is not worth expectations by society. That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. If someone's stealing from you, cut your brother off. If someone's freaking beating your mom, go beat that guy up. No, don't do that. Go call the cops. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter who the person is. If they're toxic, get rid of them. You'll be happier in the end. Next story. That sounded like I was about to end, but next story. <laughs> no, Karen. Your kid cannot have my asthma medication. This happened to me today, and I'm still scratching my head for the logic. Mandatory on my phone and non-English speaker disclaimer. Cast, me, Karen, and the hero bus driver. I'm a 34 year old Dutch guy without a driver's license. It sucks, but Dutch public transport kinda rocks, so for almost two years now, I have been using it to get to my job. Because of the pandemic, bus schedules have been adjusted to once or twice per hour. It is far from ideal, but I understand why. Kids are not going to school, so the bus company would lose money letting empty buses drive. But by bus, from home to my work, I would be traveling 90 minutes instead of 40, and I would arrive at work 30 minutes earlier than normal. To me, this is not an option. So I decided to cycle to work halfway. That way, I could cut 30 minutes out of the trip. I can get to work at my normal time. The one problem today is that I am asthmatic, and it was quite windy out this morning. So I get to the bus station this morning, already struggling for breath. I quickly lock my bike and walk towards the terminal, focusing on my breathing. Five minutes later, the bus arrives, I greet the driver and sit down. A minute later, our Karen of the story enters the bus. She takes a seat in the road next to mine, and a few minutes later the bus driver starts the bus and off we go. I still feel like I'm struggling for breath while coughing. I quickly get my inhaler, plus my chamber out, assemble it, and start using it as I struggle to breathe. It instantly works, and I feel precious oxygen enter my lungs. This piques Karen's attention. What are you doing? She asks. Taking my medication? I have asthma, and with this weather, it's quite a struggle to get it here. I replied. Does it help with breathing? She asked, and I nodded my head. Well, yes. I have kids at home, and with the corona, I don't want them to suffocate if they get it. So give me your inhaler. You can get a new one. And she holds out her hand. Oh boy. Not going to happen, lady. I said in my most dry and mocking tone, I need these meds, and they don't help for corona. I don't care. Give it here, she says, and thrusts out her hand again. My kids need it more. I again tell her, no, and put my medication in my backpack and try to put on my headset. This is where Karen goes full EP and grabs my backpack and starts going through it. Luckily, the hero bus driver was paying attention and we all lurch forward as he hits the brakes. He stops the bus, stands up, and in his seatbelt, drills the instructor voice says, Lady, give the man his backpack back. Now! There is absolutely no doubt of the authority in his voice. And the lady turns tomato red and she hands the backpack. I thought that was it. Oh boy, I was wrong. I'm not going to type this in caps, but our hero yelled every word. Why on earth would you think that someone's asthma medication would help against corona? Besides, you saw the man use it. What if he has a virus but didn't get sick? But also, he used it. You're a gross lady. Get off the bus. Now. The lady looks like a deer in the headlights, but doesn't move. Get off. Now. The hero yells again. Finally, the lady gets up and out of the bus. I thanked our hero bus driver as he sits down and we get on our way again. As the bus driver drives off, I saw the lady on her phone. No assault, police, destruction of property, so it could have been much worse. Still, I wish I could tell this Karen, too bad we weren't out of the city yet, you disgusting bee. Dang. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. If someone went through my junk, I probably would have snatched that out of her hands so much quicker than the bus driver could have stopped on his brakes like that. I actually do have asthma. I have my inhaler right here. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be wasting those um. When you need that medication, you need that inhaler. Nothing. You don't know what suffering is until your brain is screaming that it wants oxygen and you can't get oxygen. And like when he said that the inhaler helps instantly, it's like it's honestly like wizard magic. You're like, uh, eh, I can't breathe. And then puff, and then boom, you can breathe and everything is well. It's like everything just feels great again. It's crazy. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you guys think about these stories. If you guys agree or disagree with any of these entitled parents, let me know. Because if you agree with these parents, we need to block you right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I hope I see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And goodbye. My lovelies.